So we are reading today Sri Sri Prema Bhakti Chandrika, verse 112. It is a very wonderful verse also about the flood of Prema. And we know who has brought the flood of Prema. It's a verse about Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Shri Krishna Chaitanya Deva Rati Mati Tare Seva Prema Kalpa Taru Data Radhika Pranandana Aparupai Sabakata So Shri Krishna Chaitanya Dev with loving attachment for he gave us the wish yielding tree of love of God. How wonderful are all these topics of the Prince of Braj, Sri Krishna, the treasure of Radhika's life as he descended in his Goda Rupa. Am I uh, good uh, uh, audible? Is it the sound, everything is okay? Yes, yes. Okay, yes, yes. good, good. But, Smithy, because before to go to, to the flow of this verse, I have just one small, maybe technical. Uh, he said, God, is it the same thing like to say, love for God? God. Again, I mean, say it again. Your is, voice was cut. Your voice was cut. Say it again, please. Uh -huh. uh, there is said, "Wish jeweling tree of love of God." So, just English in English, love of God is the same things like love for God. Of course. Okay, so it's the same things. Okay. But of course, we can also see it and feel it from our perspective. Different kinds of perspective. We would say love of goddess. Yeah? Chaitanya came because he wanted to have this love of goddess. But he also distributed and he lived it. He felt it. But at the same time, for those who are in this religious consciousness, it's God. So God is a very like stretchable interpretation uh, possible for the kind of love that Mahaprabhu gave. If you want love for God, you can also chant Hare Krishna. Then you will be a religious person and then your life will be also very good. If you want love for the goddess, then you have to really go deep and find out who is Chaitanya and go in deep feelings. And we are so lucky because these deep feelings, they were given to us by our Gurudev. They are given to us continuously. We are infused. Né? Like uh, Goravani Ji was saying yesterday, uh, my name is Goravani and I am an addict. <laughs> We are the uh, confessing uh, Radhika, Radhika uh, Seva, Sevaras addicts. But someone else maybe not feel it like this. Therefore, in many scriptures, we also feel that the words are in general. But if you go deep down with all the meanings and the feelings, then we are the addicts. We are intoxicated and we want to fully drown in the sevaras to the lotus feet of our swami and that is what we do here in these glasses we are drowning ourselves and by the mercy of gurudev more and more others and the whole you know sangha into that feeling of chaitanya as Srimati radhika who is giving to her beloved her mahabhav so that Krishna becomes Mahabhav. And in that feeling, he is over flooding the whole world with Mandri Bhav. So that is the same uh, secret that we are churning and again and again, because we ourselves also cannot get enough of this. We want to become more conscious of this. And that's why 
uh, Nara Tom Dastaku is writing, how wonderful are all these topics. He is the prince of Braj, but you know, he became Shimati Radhika. And not only partially, when he became really fulfilled, when he uh, reached, so to say, his pinnacle of his desire to feel Shimati Radhika, he became she and she became he. That is the, the amazing and the unlimited treasure house of Prema. And that is, um, yeah, according to my, um, my deeper desires, I can relish also to feel this and to serve this. And so when we serve Chaitanya, we are not only um, trying to be religious persons that we are serving one avatar of God like we are serving any avatar or we find that they are all great. No, we want to serve our Swamini, and that's why uh, our Chaitanya is so special to us. And he is the one that is giving the Prem, Prema Datta. He is giving the wish yielding tree of Prem. He is giving the tree, but actually, what I always find a special, and also I memorize it right now when we are with Gurudev, then he is always singing Prema Datta Nitai Gor. So, first Nitai. Why? Because Nitai is the one that opens the door to Chaitanya. Because Nitai is Ananga Manjari. She is the, you know, closest and the most similar personality that came to spread this Prem. And she is actually more. Even more, uh, how do you say? Why is Nityananda Avadut? Because he is serving in all the rasas, and we know that Swamini's expansions, all of her different expansions, are Vrindavan. So also she is expanding in all different different aspects of Vrindavan just to serve Mohan. And in Chaitanya, even then. You know, there was still a lot of awe and reverence, especially in the beginning. But with Nityananda, if we look at it closely, it is always Avadut. Always Nitai is the generous, most generous giver of Prem. And what he gives, he gives the Prem to Chaitanya. He is so generous that he is becoming mad in this uh, generosity. And that's why also Nityananda is not uh, using any um, ordinary rules or so of society. He was never so much bound by society. Whereas Chaitanya, he was very much bound. He was the Nitai Pandit. He was a great learned scholar. And then he was, uh, you know, he he was married, and then he got married again, and then he tried to serve his mother. But you say Nitai, you see Nitai, he left immediately uh, in a young age, and he was just wandering around, uh, waiting for his time to come to serve Chaitanya in that prema datta, in that giving of prem. And that is so hidden. You know, it, you cannot even find such a glorification here. It is really amazing for me that I never find so much glorification of Nitai as what I have heard from Gurdi. I can honestly, honestly say as a, you know, and I have many uh, experiences with teachers, but I never found this uh, depth of Guru Tattva, Nitai, understanding and revelation as we have been given by our Gurudev, Srila Sripad Sadhu Maharaj. And only that actually I feel is opening the, the doors to the heart of Chaitanya because, you know, in the end, Ananga Manjari is no different from Srimati Radhika. She's her younger sister and she's also at the same time um, non-different 
and she is a very hidden uh, tattva. And by her hiding, um, how do you say that mood? She is also very uh, a special special key for myself, what I can say to the understanding and the feeling to uh, Chaitanya as when Radha and Krishna are together in Chaitanya, then we have to ask ourselves, how is that happening or how is it um, approachable? How can we, how can we understand it? And that is actually revealed by Ananga Mandri because she is that a form of Srimati Radhika, that expansion that is giving that depth. But for, before I go on talking and talking and talking, I also want to a little bit read in that purport Mahaprabhu's worship and his pastime of bestowing prame is here described, and that comes from Chaitanya Chaitamrita. Krishna Janaya Ye Jagatu Koilo Danya Ata Eva Nama Hoilo Shri Krishna Chaitanya. Because he blessed the whole universe by teaching them about Krishna, he is named Sri Krishna Chaitanya. Sri Krishna consciousness. So again, we have this Sri Krishna consciousness. Because without Sri, there is no beauty. Without Sri, there is no one uh, who can, who can uh, give that consciousness. Because Krishna himself is not giving himself. Like Srimati Radhika is giving herself to Krishna. And only then he can realize her love. So in the same way, when Srimati Radhika is giving herself, to us or to the whole world, then it is let in, in the last end, we can also say it's Krishna, right? Who wants to make her known now? Because they are never independent of each other. They are never separate. And that is also something that Gurudev has given so much to me, to always keep this union of them in my heart and my consciousness and not make the separation of them because only this union will give the key to the to our service as aspiring mandris but also the key to to feeling them when they are together so we have known and heard this verse so many times by naratom dastako he says when you worship uh, radhika you will get krishna and when you worship Krishna, you will get Radhika. So we can say also that because Krishna had this desire to feel the love of Radhika, he is also giving her love to us. And we can say that she made it possible because she agreed and she uh, opened herself to the whole world because of his desire. So this is the ongoing beauty of the ping pong of Radha and Mohan in Chaitanya. Gurudev speaks about the ping pong in this material world. Yeah, we know it. We all know it. But just now I feel inspired to speak about the ping pong of Radha and Krishna and Chaitanya because they are also, you know, eternally playing inside. And if we see Radhika, we can know this is also Krishna's mercy because he is also giving her to us by wanting to experience her love. He is so generous also because he wants now in his most vulnerable and submissive, you know, he becomes so submissive. We read it again and again in Chaitanya Chaitamrita and also in uh, Vilap Kushmanali. When is he the most uh, beautiful? When he is so submissive to his, his Swamini, to our Swamini. And when he wants to take, you know, the chance to massage her feet, to paint her feet, to, 
to do her decoration, to do her Shringa. Although he is Shringa Ras personified, so his highest experience comes when he is serving in that Shringa Ras to Swamini. And she, on the other hand, is allowing that because she loves him so much that she has no, you know, she has no shyness to be also what she what he wants her to be. He wants her also to be the how do you say that? The enjoyer. Because when Radhika becomes Krishna, then she takes on the role of enjoyer. You know? For his pleasure. That's why Krishna, when um when he becomes Mahabhav, he has to become Mahabhav. That was the subject, I think, from last week, from Vilapa 85, when uh, when they were churning in the early mornings. Krishna has not only gotten the Mahabhav of Shrimati Radhika, he has become, he has become it. So in that role exchange, which is, which is called Prema uh, Vilas Vivata in Sanskrit as a term, in that exchange of roles, they have, they have each other's qualities and they they are making each other relish the qualities of the other. Radhika and that is hap happening in Chaitanya. Yes, Gauras, Gauravani? We also had yesterday this theme about the mandri, that she is actually not only becoming Mahabhav, she is really getting Mahabhav because of Radharani's mercy. And when you spoke about this ping pong, I was just thinking, this ping and pong is going through us, ping through the manjari from Radha to Krishna, and pong from Krishna through the manjari to Radha. So actually, we are always completely uh, in this exchange of love, if we want. I, I just had this connections from yesterday, sorry. Nice, no sorry. I'm happy when you are sharing because I am just uh, depending on the mercy of all those who reciprocate with, with the feelings that I try to express which Gurudev has given into my heart. And it's beautiful, isn't it, to see this ping pong, this divine ping pong. How it's all interchangeable and how it is so much connected. This feelings of Shimati Radhika that is reflected in her manjaris and that is coming through the manjaris to Mohan. And it, even so much, Mohan is so much Im impressed and inspired that he also wants to be like serving like a manjari. He wants to serve Shimati Radhika by painting her feet. and But then again, he comes back into his Purusha bath. <laughs> he cannot avoid it. <laughs> because when he starts painting her feet, he becomes so much absorbed in the beauty of her that he gets lost. <laughs> he gets, you know, his hands are shaking because he, he thinks that, how can I be so lucky? That I can, uh, that she is allowing me to do that service because he, he loves to do service for his Swamini. In that moment, she is his Swamini. She is not only, you know, anyone that likes to have his company like all the other gopis, but she is allowing him things that nobody else can allow him to be submissive. Melting completely, forgetting all and taking on a different role, completely the opposite, becoming the servant of Srimati Radhika. So that is so intimate, that is so um, confidential. And we are so blessed that we have been taken birth in this time where this is happening. And I feel it's not only the blessing. To, to have born in that time and we have a human body. But mostly, mostly, I must say, 
that the blessing is for myself to have a Vaishnava, to have somebody who is so merciful to give this to me. These feelings and this uh, deep connection to the mercy of Nitai Goranga. That is not different from the mercy of Shrimati Radhika and Krishna. And how this inter, you know, interconnected, it's like an eternal ongoing Leela that is so amazing and it's always newer and newer amazements are coming. If I can uh, forget my human ego mentality, my Purusha Bhav, but if I become a servant of this love and this, and this, uh, you know, how do you say, admitting addicting, addictive. <laughs> I like that point, Guru so much. I can always meditate about that. Because in this world, we always have a tendency, at least me, to be addicted. Oh, always. Either I like to eat so much. Or I like, you know, the body as a purusha, you know, as an enjoyer, always likes to do things excessively, at least my body. I don't know about your body <laughs> because I only have this my body. But I could I could imagine that this uh, tendency is, is uh, universal. We like to overeat. We like to over, you know, this. We like to do many things that, uh, you know, we want to have a special experience. And because of that, we have a tendency to be addicted. But this addiction finds its highest limit, its highest purpose, its highest uh, realization by becoming addictive to hear about the leelas of Goranga, Nityananda, and Radha and Mohan, Radha Krishna, Vrindavan, all the Vaishnavas. And their, you know, realizations to share this, it is the highest addiction that will bring us out of this world. And so, Niti, this addiction are, are our natural, natural position, actually. <laughs> yes. Can, can we say, actually, that uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is... Uh, some combination of the serving, Radhika is coming to serve him by satisfying his desire, not to, to see how is how, how are, uh, her feelings are. And in the same time, he wants also to serve her. So he spent the glories of her, but how he can serve her in the role of Manjari. And he also give this role to other Manjaris like Goswamis. And so some festival of serving each other. Amazing. Amazing, Diane. I love it how you express that. Wow. Gives me goosebumps. Very good. Yes, it's a festival. <laughs> I think that's why in Vrindavan there's always festivals going on, isn't it? Yes, always because festivals. everyone is in their natural position, addicted completely. <laughs> addicted to make each other happy. Addicted to surf, addicted to, you know, sing and dance and uh, cook and decorate and addicted to make it always, you know, the most beautiful. And that's why I also like festivals. Like we recently had this festival in our garden here behind the house in our Govinda's garden. And I just love it because... So many devotees are there and they decorated so nicely a small kunj. And I could not take part in it because probably I think I was cooking or so. I was just doing the the pre pre uh you know meditation on it and it became so beautiful. And it I was just so overwhelmed. And when we were sitting in this little kunj and all the flowers were there. And all the leaves of the branches. And then I was so happy and satisfied because I feel, oh my God, now we are sitting here, we are chanting together, and there are so many nationalities. We had the Japanese devotees, we had, you know, 
the vote in, in the end also uh, Prashant Baya and Ras Alila came and uh, I mean there were so many souls and it was so um addictive you know because I thought my god this is the goal of my garden this is the goal of all the plants it's not my garden it's Govinda's garden but I think Govinda was very happy <laughs> because we were chanting Radhika's name and all the plants could hear and all the birds could hear and the earth that we were sitting on you know the earth it vibrated in the Harinam and in the love of the devotees and so many tears were uh you know coming because we all felt this that this is actually the culmination of this expression of service coming together and it was so e easy you know it just happened and it was guru purnima so i i mean by chance it was guru purnima i didn't even look in the calendar before only after some time i realized wow this is going to be guru purnima wow and then when we are living in this addiction then things just happen we cannot say that we are the doer anymore it just happens because this addiction like you say becomes so natural it becomes natural and then our whole lives will be full of these spiritual addictions that we we don't want to live about them anymore uh, without them you know Absolutely. when Dora was now um my Goda Sundara when he was now we had this tour and you know for the first time he was not so busy that he could also participate because the years before he had also many so obligations but this time we could do it all together and he after that tour he said this is my life <laughs> and i was just so happy to hear this expression this is my life it is because it is the life of our lives it is the pleasure of our Radha and Krishna, and it's the pleasure of all the Vaishnavas. This is our life. And that is, like you say, the mercy that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to give these party, you know, spiritual parties, kirtan and dancing and feasting and then rolling on the ground and sleeping. <laughs> We were sleeping in different, different locations and it all became manifest somehow. It was all working out. I mean, I could have slept that night under, you know, just near to that kunj because it was so beautiful. I could have rolled out my, my mattress and I could have slept there because I felt like a, a you know, like someone who doesn't care. Where's my house? <laughs> my house is where the Vaishnavas are, where they are dancing and singing, where we chant the holy name and we inspire each other. This is my home. This is my house. And when Gurudev actually as representative of Nityananda gives this opportunity, then we can say that we are blessed. And what is the result of this blessing? We have more taste for that. We become more addictive. We become more crazy that we can do service again. We don't think what service. We will just pray that any kind of, you know, arrangement will come that use Gurudev will use me again for service. Because I cannot even imagine what his his desires are. Because he has the greatest and deepest aspirations for us also, because he wants us to be how do you say that his shadow her shadow so whether this happens like that or like this it doesn't matter but it, as as long as it happens as long as the dose is always strong enough <laughs> sorry i'm talking nonsense doses your garden become gambira <laughs> <laughs> my garden become blessed yes i can say that Really, I feel blessed. It became a peace and love and um, festival of, of meeting. And I can say that this will be never forgotten 
And also the devotees from Japan, they were so touched and they were so happy. And we were doing this chanting all together. It was nice. I'm not uh, saying all of this just to give a show of, of, of what happened or so. I just want to express the feelings that helped me grow. And I think these feelings we have to find in our lives. What is so impressive that this addiction, it becomes a natural state of uh, being. And I was so happy, especially when Gaurav Sundha said, this is my life. You know, now he became also addicted and not to work so much anymore. <laughs> but be in the festival of love. And then, you know, the last years of our life, to be happy in that is a really a great, a great blessings by Gurudev and all the Vaishnavas. So Baba goes on and says, so by simply seeing Mahaprabhu, that knowledge instantly culminates into Prem without the practice of sadhana. Wow. He's explaining in this, uh, the Krishna, Sri Krishna consciousness, and why it is, his name is Sri Krishna Chaitanya. And uh, he, he says that although different Acharyas taught about Sri Krishna, that knowledge can only culminate into Prem through the practice of Bhajan. So we, we, it's very interesting uh, how he says that. Who is Sri Krishna? And, and the teachers have tried to explain who is Sri Krishna. And, and unless there is a feeling to that, it cannot be experienced. And he speaks about how knowledge can culminate into frame, how something that we have heard, something that we have read, how it can be felt, how it can come into love, feelings, into a, a state of being. Ah, in former times, we have said how Gyan can come into Vigyan, but now we would say how something that I have learned will become my feeling, will become my being, my existence, my service, my one and all. And he says, by simply by seeing Mahaprabhu, that knowledge instantly culminates into Prem without the practice of sadhana. That goes for everyone who sees him. And therefore he is called Deva because in his bodily or in his body, the, the aura, the luster of Sri Radha's Divya Kanti, her light resides. So here again we hear that. That Shrimati Radhika is the light of Krishna. And in Chaitanya, she is his emanation, his golden light that comes out of him. She resides in him. The whole body is Shrimati Radhika's Divya Kanta or Kanti, like the Jyoti or the light. And we know also Divya Gyan, we have heard this word, is a transcendental Divya. So Divya Kanti is also a transcendental light of Srimadhi Radhika's love. So when we talk about Sri Krishna, maybe we can realize or not. Maybe we have the power to do sadhana or bhajan or not. But by simply seeing Mahaprabhu, by just seeing, and this seeing, I think, personally, is not limited to personally see him. It is also seeing through the eyes of Sri Guru, through the eyes of those who have seen them. So by seeing and by receiving Mahaprabhu's mercy through Nityananda, that knowledge instantly culminates into praying without the practice of sadhana. I mean, that doesn't mean I don't have to do sadhana. It's not that I should become lazy now and say, oh, it will all happen automatically. 
But I think that hint that Baba is giving here in his purport is a, a possibility. It's a very great hope that by the mercy of Sri Guru, of our teachers who have seen Mahaprabhu, because they are hearing about his or her glories all the time, about, you know, because it's Sri Krishna, about Radha's and Krishna's glories all the time. They come into contact. And then that, that knowledge, which was a theory before, it culminates, it grows. It is like the, the flood of Delhi now. The flood is overtaking. Nobody can stop it. And it comes even to Vrindavan on the, you know, material level, because Vrindavan is always over flooded by love. But, but even just if we say it geo geographically, that flood that Mahaprabhu gave or is still giving through our, the teachers who have been connected with that Sri Krishna consciousness. Shri Krishna Chaitanya Deva. It can culminate into Prem by causeless mercy. I want to say causeless mercy and not without the practice of sadhana because someone might misunderstand it. Because if I have a causeless mercy, then I want to do that what we call sadhana. I want to remember, I want to chant, I want to listen. Actually, that will be my whole existence. It doesn't mean that I will do it artificially. I have to press it. No, by in every activity of my daily life, this Mahamantra, this meditation will be inside of me and it will come out in every activity. That is the natural uh, position of the soul because it is so natural to us that we don't want to get rid of this addiction anymore, right? <laughs> we are in our constitutional position now. And that is something that I can be fully uh, crazy about all the time. And nobody can stop me from that, especially by the mercy of uh, Sri Guru also that that um, knowledge will go deeper and deeper and deeper and our lives will be transformed so we can do uh, everything what we do in that kind of consciousness. So we can also say now from the point of Rasa Leela, that was a little bit tattva, but now from the point of Rasa, also we can say that the bodily luster of Sri Radha's light resides you know, when, when Radhika takes over Krishna, what happens? And then he becomes golden, right? Because Krishna is fully, fully immersed in her feelings, in her mood, in her Mahabhav, in her service. And sometimes it also happens that it goes the other way around. That when Shimati Radhika becomes fully absorbed in Krishna, in Mohan, she takes on his blue color. And that's when she becomes an Angamandri. And in that form, she is going out as Nitai, and she becomes everything for Mohan. She becomes his bed. She becomes his everything. That's when Bahiranga or Antaranga becomes Bahiranga. Means the internal potency, Shimati Radhika, is going outside to become everything in the service of Mohan. And that's when she becomes Ananga Mandri or when she becomes also Nityananda. Because in that mood, she is going outside. She's serving all the living entities. She is serving them and Mohan to come back to their constitutional position. That is also very interesting and deep meditation. 
how Shimati Radhika is so merciful that she comes in this world. She never leaves Vrindavan, just like Krishna also never leaves Vrindavan. But together they come in this uh, Navat Lila to call all the souls back into their eternal positions as servants, as mandraris. And Baba says, in the Gaudiya Vaishnava Sampradaya, there is a simultaneous dual worship of both Sriman Mahaprabhu and his associates in Navadvip and of Shishi Radha Madhava and their Sakis in Braj. In the end of Srila Kavi Kanapura, Sri Chaitanya Chandrodaya Nataka, Sriman Mahaprabhu personally blessed Advaita Prabhu saying, Oh, Acharya, I'm always absorbed in my blissful, luscious pastimes residing in Vrindavan. And I will give you all spiritual bodies suitable for joining me according to your own taste in these Vrindavan pastimes. That one remaining great duty I will swiftly perform. I remember also one very nice uh, incident in that connection. Because Chaitanya and uh, Advaita Acharya, they have also a special relationship. Advaita Acharya is always the elder, and Mahaprabhu was always so much, you know, bowing down, and he was always very, very uh, respectful to him. And we know in the Indian culture especially, you know, the elders are very much always respected. But Advaita Chaya, he didn't even like it so much. He was a little bit jealous of his other fellow god brother, uh, Jagadananda Pandit. Because Jagadananda Pandit, he was so crazy with love with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that he bring him this big bottles of oil. <laughs> he always wants to massage Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Mahaprabhu was very much in this mood of a monk. And he said, I cannot. <laughs> Sorry, it's the wrong Leela right now. You can do it as Satya Bama. <laughs> in Parakaman, no, not. But they had such a sweet exchange because sometimes uh, Jagadananda became a little bit in, in, in man and he would break the pot and he would not speak with Mahaprabhu. But Mahaprabhu was not so, you know, like so close and so confidential in his dealings with Advaita Acharya. And so Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he asked Advaita Acharya to speak about this non-dual truth. That was his service. But now he says to him, I'm always absorbed in my Vrindavan pastimes and I will give you bodies accordingly that you also can take part in. You know, Advaita Acharya is Mahavishnu and combined from Ashiva and Mahavishnu. So he was also, you know, blessed to be able to participate in that. And he was also eager. Otherwise, why would he be so eager to be chastised by Chaitanya? And he was so eager that he even used the very cruel means. You know that? You remember that? Once he was so, you know, he tried to make him upset. Because he had seen that uh, Jagadananda, one of the disciples who was a little bit in this mood of being a queen of, uh, you know, Dvaraka in her relationship to Krishna, he had seen that he became so close and Mahaprabhu was, you know, being upset and you know, like this, and he liked to also increase some feeling relationship. So he said uh, one time to Mahaprabhu, I will preach about uh, all is nothing, all is empty. <laughs> because he's also Sankaracharya, he can do that. And then Mahaprabhu became very angry at him. <laughs> he was running behind him with a stick. You don't speak about this. You don't say that. <laughs> This is not why we are here. It's not this age. <laughs> There's not the right truth. And then he was so happy. 
<laughs> it was so happy. It was yeah, finally, finally you are you are you know coming closer to me. You want to beat me, but I'm happy that you are so close to me. You are chastising me. You don't make always this to me anymore. So and then another time, I also uh, wanted to explain what is the meaning of Advaita. And I, my mind can be quite, you know, complicated. So I, I thought, well, Advaita is the non-dual truth and this and that. And then uh, Gurudev, he said to me, don't make it so complicated. Don't make it so philosophical. You just say that he used to worship God, but now he worships love. And I thought, my God, Gurudev, you are so genius. <laughs> Because we know that the Pancha Tattva, you know, Advaita is standing there. And also Narada Muni is standing there and they worship now Shemata Radhika. They used to worship like God, but now they are worshiping love. And I thought, oh good, this is so perfect. Everything is said, everything is felt in that feeling. So, here Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says to Advaita Acharya, I will give you all bodies suitable for joining me in these Rindavan pastimes. Mahaprabhu is the combined form of Sri Radha Krishna in the form of Radha Krishna he is always absorbed in sweet pastimes in Sri Vrindavan. And in his Navadvi pastimes, he is bestowing the relish of the sweet taste in Brajas Nikunjas to his associates in their mentally conceived forms of Radha's maidservant. This is Sriman Mahaprabhu's final duty. So this is a quote by Chichitanya Chandrodaya. And that's a blessing to Advaita Prabhu because he wanted to also be very much close to Chaitanya. He, because, you know, isn't it natural also? These are all high personalities. You know, Mahavishnu and Shiva and Narada Muni and Brahma, all of them. But they now feel the sweetness of Srimati Radhika in that form, in Chaitanya. They feel, they feel the sweetness of this high ecstasy, like, you know, the dancing and the singing. And he, they get this vibration. And now they all want to forget about themselves. They all want to forget about their Vaikuntha mood and their Aishvaya bhav. They all need to have this sweetness of Mahaprabhu. They are also addicted. And even they let Mahaprabhu beat them. If they only get this drop of sweetness. And then Advaita Acharya says, By your wish, we may attain whatever you want in any other abode or body. We will eternally remember our origin in your wonderful pastimes. He is so mad. This Advaita Chaya also became so mad. You give us what you want. We just want to remember that. To be with you and in these loving Leelas. We are fully, fully satisfied with just being your servants and to be touched by that wonderful prayer that is going through every pore in your body. All desires are fulfilled. And Naratam Dastako says in one of his songs, when all desires are fulfilled, thirst is quenched. Here we will meet Chaitanya and there Radha and Krishna. So again, we have this beautiful connection. We are here now in this 
universe where Chaitanya is present with his full mercy and Nityananda, but they're full, you know. Kripa Kori. They give all this, you know, they give all this mercy. They give it freely. And then by this, actually by this, only by this, hearing this from our dear brothers and sisters and Gurudev and all the Achayas and feeling it because we are now, you know, we are now hearing and this is like we are hearing, th uh, seeing through the ears. Hearing means seeing through the ears. Because how we can see Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? We feel by hearing. And then all thirst is quenched because we, why? Because we are now realizing there are no others than Sri Radhika and her beloved together. And in that oneness, they are relishing. They are relishing all their leelas in Chaitanya. And they are always exchanging their love in all different ways. And to meditate on this, that are the confidential reasons of the appearance of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And to meditate on this is also how we can enter and how we can see Chaitanya. And then we see Radha and Mohan, Radha and Krishna. We see them in him or Srimati Radhika or the Mandaris mercy that has been given to us to serve like Krishna wants to serve Srimati Radhika. All that is in there. It's all combined and it's eternally going on. And that is the special mercy that we have. It's not so far away. It depends only on my consciousness, how closely I can connect, or I want to connect. If I am a religious-minded person, yeah, then it will be my altar and it will be my duties and it will be my routes. And it will be my relationship to my good if, and I will do everything so properly and as good as I can. But if I am coming close to being spiritualized, then it's 24-7, like Gurudev always says, 24-7. None of my activities are separate from my feelings as being a Dasi or aspiring to be the disciple of my Gurudev who has these high aspirations for me. Who wants to give this to me? Who wants to connect me on the highest level? Not only being a happy person here, that is also a byproduct. But these are not the confidential reasons. The confidential reasons is to feel it and to become addicted to these feelings and in every moment try to connect and try to feel and see it and listen and hear and see with the ears. And then also Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, I am only one gardener. Where shall I go? How many fruits can I distribute alone? It will be too tiring to do it alone. Some will get it and some will not get it. And thus the mind remains confused. Thus I order everyone, give the fruits of Prem to everyone you meet. In this way, this wonderfully magnanimous wish-yielding tree of prema and the donor, the giver of the fruits of prema, Sri Krishna Chaitanya, gave Raja's sweet amorous love, a mandri bath prema, in the form of service to Sri Radha to the whole world, 
without considering who was qualified and unqualified and who performed sadhana or not. Therefore, those who do not worship him cannot relish the sweet love of Braj. Srila Kavidaj, Krishna Das Kavidaj Goswami has written, here comes another quote of Chaitanya Chaitamrita. The glories of the sweetness of this intimate prema is wonderful. The Lord relished it himself and showed its limits. Sri Chaitanya's compassion is wonderful and his generosity is also wonderful. O oh, people, worship the lotus feet of Sri Chaitanya in all respects and from that you will attain the nectarian treasure of love for Krishna. So wonderful. And also this, I am only one gardener. You know, I'm also a gardener. <laughs> it's my hobby. And, you know, if I don't have help, once in a while it gets tired. I need help. I need your help. He wants to distribute all the fruits. That's why Gurudev also says, we need to multiply. We want to share. We don't want to just enjoy and eat these sweet cherries of no, save or us. We need to share it. And then uh, when we have these meetings and gatherings, also we feel how sweet it is to share and to, you know, distribute the fruits. And it's not something artificial. It just happens by love. Now the devotees from Switzerland, like, Chavan, Radhe, Radhe, Chavan. <laughs> Radhe, Radhe, I miss your journey. I know that. I miss you again. I miss your cherries also. <laughs> <laughs> but I see you are distributing also so much love. You know, I gave Chavan some sweets, some raisins, and she made many, many packages from this. <laughs> She's also a very good gardener. Not only Chavan has a big Japanese garden, I was astonished, but also she is also distributing the fruits in many packages. I gave her one package or two, but out of them she made a hundred packages. I can see. <laughs> no, you are um, you are from your love and distribute. <laughs> it's beautiful. It's so beautiful. <laughs> and that is really that um generosity. And this being, you know, wanting to share. Even Gauravani, you saw that how she distributed um, on Bra and Braja Sundari your, your beautiful mango. Uh, no, what is it? This chutney, peach and mango. No, or was it? We share wow. that. We share isn't that. that. Isn't that amazing? Could you ever think that this would be shared in Japan? Could you do it? No, you cannot do it. But mm. here's one garden of love. It's called, she is called Chavan. She is so eager to distribute this love. She takes this chutney, you know, in the precious, in her precious feelings of love and gratitude. And she's distributing with love in Japan. And everyone is so happy. Taste this. You know, this was made in Germany by mm -hmm. this beautiful, sweet couple of love. Yeah. It's now so we are eating it here in Japan. <laughs> we enjoy so the so sweet the chutney. One by one chutney. One 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 by one one. <laughs> because uh, more, I want to more I distribute so. But it's so, so Oh no, you can have only one spoon. Many, many spoons need to be taken. <laughs> mm, so <laughs> sweet. Thank you so much. Thank you, Chavan, and thank you for coming. All oh, this was so nice. The whole festival is still going on. We are still in this transcendental party of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Now, Mahaprasadam is still going, you know, all over in all different kinds of forms. So, we are lucky.
We are very lucky and I am feeling so blessed when I see also, Chavan, how you are distributing every little drop of small prasadam. Really, and, so, yeah. so inspiring. No, isn't it, Gorawani? How do you feel that your, your chutney has come to Japan? Say something, <laughs> please. It's an ecstasy, isn't it? <laughs> this is when Radharani eats something, <laughs> then it's so precious in this moment when she ate it that it even can be distributed in Japan through the mercy of Javan and other devotees from Japan. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much. Everybody, oh, this is a little spicy, little inside of yes. it. Yes. <laughs> Bye, you and the brothers and the ladies and the Gorabani ladies. And so the, your love is uh, time to this here, this room in Japan, we are, we are, we are taste so, so sweet. So thank you so much. And the Suni ladies are so, so nice, Prashadas. The, I, we are also the so so how can i say so so nectars one what two 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 months but uh, it's just nectar and i we feel and uh, you know the no no border to the japan the germany or the europe no the, we are the same Place we are living. I feel that so. I'm mm. so. And your German, the Nagora Chandraji is now in Japan <laughs> and is sharing the so beautiful, really, really so beautiful time this weekend. Almost 20 devotees coming with the. <laughs> 